Hi everybody, how are you? Hope all is well with you. Um, today I'm going to go into the practical session of uh, database development using SQL, uh, specifically our data data management system that we're going to use is MySQL, which runs on WAMP server. Now, if you look at this display that I have right now, that's the WAMP server. It has Apache, it has uh, the MySQL, it has MariaDB 10, and then also it has Apache 5 and Apache 6. I'm using um, WAMP server version 3.2.3, and it's a, on a 64-bit. I don't. It depends on your laptop. My laptop can at least accommodate uh, software that run on 64-bit. So this is uh, the software that we're going to use. My assumption is you have it installed on your computer. I said use WAMP server. It is an open source software. Have it installed on your computer, and then we can start the session. Now, if you look at uh, the, the right hand side, the bottom right hand side of your of your window, uh, when you go to that taskbar, when you click that icon, here you have the WAMP server. Now, this is showing if you right click it, it has start all services, stop all services or restart all services. Now, my icon is showing green, implying that my server is on, there are four. I am good to go. So this, if it is if it is showing uh, orange and, and red, it means that your server is not on and therefore you cannot do anything. So please to turn on your, to turn on your server, you click on start all services. So immediately you, you start on all start all services, it will gradually change from red to orange and then finally it will change to green and then it will show you that you are ready to go and your server is on. So you go straight away on MySQL, that icon MySQL, and then you come to MySQL console. MySQL console. So you click, um, you click on, click that, then you come to, you write, still you click on that uh, icon of WAMPS, WAMP server, and then you click on MySQL, and then you click on MySQL console. Now, when you click that, it will give you this dialog box. So our default username is the root. Please don't change it. You click OK. And when you click OK, it gives you this command line where it is asking you to uh, enter the password. The default password, you just click Enter. And when you click Enter, OK, then it, it automatically uh, shows you the command for MySQL. So at this particular moment, we are ready to start. So uh, for SQL, you cannot what we're going to do now is we're going to try and we create databases um, a database so what we are doing is we are doing a ddl data definition language where we're supposed to create the database creating tables and the structures within the tables so i hope that you read through the notes that i sent earlier on so what we're going to do is um, the server that we have on here, okay, the Apache server, already it has, uh, sorry, the web server, it already has some databases. So you want to see what databases are there. Maybe you can work with those databases or you can alternatively create your own databases. So um, for us to see what databases are in, you can write the, you just write the syntax, show, database show databases and then you click enter you just click on show databases and then you click enter now what you see there these are the these are the databases that that we have on the what on this server info schema mark my sql etc now after after that after knowing the databases that are in, then we can create our database. Now we are going to create a database called DIM. So we say the general syntax for the creation of the database is create 
database and then the database name in this case we are going to call the database dim and then don't remember don't forget to terminate the statement with the semicolon so when you terminate the statement there they are telling you that the query is okay so you have created that database now we want to see whether it is it that database has been created still using the same syntax um the syntax of show databases when you enter you can see our database is here the database is called dim now after creating that database okay uh, remember I had earlier told you to create three tables, a table called student, um, course, and program. So right now we are going to start with um, trying to create the table called uh, student. Okay, But before we do that, you have to, already you have uh, six databases, you have got to select the database. Otherwise, if you just go straight to creating, the table will be misplaced somewhere. So you have to select the database where you want that table to be created. So in this case, you, you need to, you write the statement use, use, dim okay so now when you say use dim now you have actually selected now the database called dim now the database called dim is where we are going to create create the table student with um registration number which is a voucher that is the data type and in brackets we are going to say it has let's say 10 characters then we are going to create um, the first name of the student the last name of the student and uh, uh, the first name last name this uh, sorry first name of the student which is a voucher, kind, please remember that for each and every particular column, you need to specify the, the data type and the domain. Then also we have the name, which is also a voucher, the name, which is also a voucher, a voucher. We can say also it has a domain of 10, and then we shall end with the student's date of birth which has a data type called date with a data type called date and then we close the brackets and then we terminate the statement so if you look at this they say the query is okay, implying that we have created the table and we have specified the 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 what the, the we have specified the columns that we want in the table. Now, for us to be able to see the different columns that we have in the table, we are going to run a syntax describe. So you say describe student now by describing students these are the different columns that we have created for the student table now we need to um we need to if you look at it, it does not have a primary key so i remember i mentioned that you can be in position to uh, modify or alter the table you can modify the tables so in this case, we are going to first try and we include a primary key for registration number. So where we want to include a primary key for the registration number, we can say we our syntax is alter, you alter the table, you alter the table, and then the table name, which is student, alter table table name which is student and then you modify the column so you write modify in this case the column is reg number 
okay, which is a virtual with a domain of 10, a virtual with domain of 10. And in this case, we want to put it, we want to put a primary key, okay? And then we want to put a primary key and then you terminate the statement. Now here they said the query is okay, the row has been affected. When we go to describe student, okay, terminate, you'll see that now range number originally, if you look at the previous table, range number virtual, yes, it did have here, there was no primary key. But when you come down here now, it shows you it is a primary key. And we say that by default, all primary key values are not null. That is why here in the column of null, now you see no, and yet earlier the column of null had yes. Now that is if you're adding, if you want to add a call, if you want to add a constraint. Um, if you want to add a column to the to, to that table called student, we can be in position to also add. Uh, a column by still using the same syntax so not we use the alter table syntax so we are going to say alter table uh, by the way for you to bring back the previous statement you press the arrow key on your keyboard so you say alter table student and then we say add now we're going to add a new column so we say add in this case, we are going to add the course code, course code with um, course code that is a virtual. Let's give it a domain of, uh, of uh, 10 and we close. Now, if you look at this, now we have said we wanted, we have added a new column called uh, course code. If we describe student, okay, the new course code is here. It has been added. That is for adding the column. Now, um, if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, let's say change, or if you if you want to put a data type, okay, you can still also uh, modify the data type. For example, we can modify the data type of um, the data type. Let's say let's modify the data type of 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 what of date to year. Yeah. So um, we're going to come here and then we say uh, data type. Let's say year. Okay. We shall change it later. Oh gosh. Say that date of birth, put it as a year. Um, so it's alter table student, and then the data type we're going to um, we're going to modify the column, modify, we're going to modify um the column column date of birth to year and then you terminate that is what you have done so that is the syntax for modifying the data type the data type so if we describe um if we describe student and terminate you will see that date of birth has changed to year so um, basically, that is what I wanted to show you. So I want you to go and continue with the tables that I gave. You create them, uh, create all the tables, create the create, give them the different data types and whatever. You can um, do a few things here and there such that in my next class you have those things and we shall continue from there. Have yourself a good day. Bye-bye.